What's up, YouTube? My name is J Max, as you can see. It's just me, and I'm back to react to another one of your recommendations. Who do we got on deck today? Tim Minchin. Let's go. Yo, 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 yo. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, if you've been here before, it's good to see you. Today, we are jumping into some Tim Minchin. Uh, this is something that was recommended on my Discord. So if you're interested in joining that and leaving me recommendations, the link to that will be down in the description below. Uh, but this is Tim Minchin's um, University of Western Australia address or speech, Nine Life Lessons. Um, so I'm very excited to jump into this and see what it's really all about. And I want to thank Blitz of Chaos for recommending this. Um, really appreciate you. Thank you for the recommendation and participating in the community. I really appreciate you. A little bit of a caveat before we jump into this. I did record a Tim Minchin video on his song, The Good Book. And I know that was highly requested on this channel. And I really wanted to post it for you, but... For some reason, and I don't know why this happened, but the audio that came from the device that I record my audio through or that I process my audio through made me sound extremely robotic and just didn't didn't sound good. And I didn't wanna I didn't wanna post it's bad quality. I wanna make sure that it's an enjoyable listening experience uh, for anyone who decides to watch these. So I did it. <laughs> it exists, but you probably will never see it. So I apologize for that. There's nothing I can do. It's out of my control. But I am excited to hear this address. Um, big fan of Tim. I think he's extremely smart, extremely wise. Um, and the fact that he's giving a graduation commencement speech. I think that's pretty cool. So I'm excited what he has to what he has to share with the youth. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll learn a thing or two. Maybe we'll all learn a thing or two. Be inspired by this. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. See what he's talking about today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Tim Minchin. <laughs> Took off the cap, huh? That's interesting. Usually people keep the cap on. In darker days... I did a corporate gig at a conference for this big company who made and sat and sold accounting software. In a bid, I presumed to inspire their salespeople to greater heights. They'd forked out 12 grand for an inspirational speaker who was this extreme sports guy who had had a couple of his limbs frozen off when he got stuck on a ledge on some mountain. It was weird. Software salespeople, I think, need to hear from someone who has had a long, successful and happy career in software sales, not from an overly optimistic ex-mountaineer. Some poor guy who had arrived in the morning hoping to learn more about sales techniques ended up going home worried about the blood flow to his extremities. It's not inspirational, it's confusing. Mm. And if the mountain was meant to be a symbol of life's challenges and the loss of limbs a metaphor for sacrifice, the software guy's not going to get it, is he? Because he didn't do an arts degree, did he? <laughs> he should have. Arts degrees are awesome and they help you find meaning where there is none. <laughs> and let me assure you, there is none. <laughs> Don't go looking for it. Searching for meaning is like searching for a rhyme scheme in a cookbook. You won't find it and it'll bugger up your souffle. He's he didn't proud like of that, that metaphor. He's he won't proud like of the rest of it. Oh, no. <laughs> Point being, I'm not an inspirational speaker. I've never lost a limb on a mountainside, metaphorically or otherwise, and I'm certainly not here to give career advice because, well, I've never really had what most would consider a job. However, I have had large groups of people listening to what I say for quite a few years now, and it's given me an inflated sense of self-importance. So I will now, at the ripe old age of 37.9, bestow upon you nine life lessons. To echo, of course, the nine lessons of carols of the traditional Christmas service, mm. which is also pretty obscure. You might find some of this stuff inspiring, you'll definitely find some of it boring, and you'll definitely forget all of it within a week. That's And be warned, there'll be lie. lots of hokey similes and obscure aphorisms which start well, but end up making no sense. 
So listen up or you'll get lost, like a blind man clapping in a pharmacy trying to echolocate the contact lens fluid. <laughs> what? <laughs> Looking for my old poetry teacher. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? One, you don't have to have a dream. Americans on talent shows always talk about their dreams. Fine, yeah. if you have something you've always wanted to do, dreamed of, like in your heart, go for it. After all, it's something to do with your time, chasing a dream. And if it's a big enough one, it'll take you most of your life to achieve. So by the time you get to it and are staring to the, into the abyss of the meaninglessness of your achievement, you'll be almost dead, so it won't matter. Oh, my God. I never really had one of these dreams, and so Ooh. I advocate passionate dedication to the pursuit of short-term goals. Mm. Be micro-ambitious. Mm. Put your head down and work with pride on whatever is in front of you. You never know where you might end up. Thus be aware the next worthy pursuit will probably appear in your periphery, which mm. is why you should be careful of long-term dreams. If you focus too far in front of you, you won't see the shiny thing out the corner of your eye. <laughs> right? Good. <laughs> Advice, metaphor. Look at me go. <laughs> Two, don't seek happiness. Happiness is like an orgasm. If you think about it too much, it goes away. <laughs> Oh. Keep busy and aim to make someone else happy and you might find you get some as a side effect. We didn't evolve mm. to be constantly content. Contented Homo erectus got eaten before passing on their genes. Three, remember it's all luck. You are lucky to be here. You are incalculably, incalculably lucky to be born and incredibly lucky to be brought up by a nice family that helped you get educated and encouraged you to go to uni. Or if you were born into a horrible family, that's unlucky and you have my sympathy, but you are still lucky. <laughs> lucky that you happen to be made of the sort of DNA that went on to make the sort of brain which when placed in a horrible childhood environment would make decisions that meant you ended up eventually graduating uni. <laughs> well done you for dragging yourself up by your shoelaces, but you were lucky. You didn't create the bit of you that dragged you up. They're not even your shoelaces. <laughs> I suppose I worked hard to achieve whatever dubious achievements I've achieved, but I didn't make the bit of me that works hard and more than, any more than I made the bit of me that ate too many burgers instead of attending lectures when I was here at UWA. <laughs> Understanding that you can't truly take credit for your successes nor truly blame others for their failures will humble you and make you more compassionate. Empathy is intuitive but is also something you can work on intellectually. Mm. Four... Exercise. I'm sorry, you pasty, pale, smoking philosophy grads, arching your eyebrows into a Cartesian curve as you watch the human movement mob winding their way through them, the miniature traffic cones of their existence. You are wrong and they are right. Well, you're half right. You think, therefore you are, but also you jog, therefore you sleep, therefore you're not overwhelmed by existential angst. You can't be can't and you don't want to be. Play a sport, do yoga, pump iron, run, whatever, but take care of your body. You're going to mm. need it. Mm. Most of you mob are going to live to nearly 100. Mm. And even the poorest of you will achieve a level of wealth that most humans throughout history could not have dreamed of. And this long, luxurious life ahead of you is going to make you depressed. <laughs> nice, but don't fact. despair. Oh. There's an inverse correlation between depression and exercise. Do it. Run, my beautiful intellectuals. Run. Five, be hard on your opinions. A famous bon mot asserts that opinions are like assholes <laughs> and that everyone has one. There is great wisdom in this, but I would add that opinions differ significantly from assholes and that yours should be constantly and thoroughly examined. <laughs> I used to do exams in here. <laughs> it's revenge. <laughs> We must think critically and not just about the ideas of others. Be hard on your beliefs. Take them out onto the veranda and hit them with a cricket bat. <laughs> Be intellectually Shit. rigorous. Identify your biases, your prejudices, your privileges. Mm. Most of society's arguments are kept alive by a failure to acknowledge nuance. Mm. We tend to generate false dichotomies and then try to argue one point using two entirely different sets of assumptions like two tennis players trying to win a match by hitting beautifully executed shots from either end of separate tennis courts. Mm. By the way, while I have science and arts graduates in front of me, please don't make the mistake of thinking the arts and sciences are at odds with one another. 
That is a recent, stupid and damaging idea. Mm. You don't have to be unscientific to make beautiful art, to write beautiful things. Mm. If you need proof, Twain, Douglas Adams, Vonnegut, McEwen, Sagan, Shakespeare, Dickens for a start. You don't need to be superstitious to be a poet. You don't need to hate GM technology to care about the beauty of the planet. You don't have to claim a soul to promote compassion. Science is not a body of knowledge nor a belief system. It is just a term which describes humankind's incremental acquisition of understanding through mm. observation. Science is awesome. The arts and sciences need to work together to improve how knowledge is communicated. Mm. The idea that many Australians, including our new PM and my distant cousin Nick Minchin, believe that sci the science of anthropogenic global warming is controversial is a powerful indicator of the extent of our failure to communicate. Damn. The fact that 30% of the people in this room just bristled is further evidence still. <laughs> the fact that that bristling is more to do with politics than science is even more despairing. Mm. Six, <laughs> be a teacher, please, please, please be a teacher. Teachers are the most admirable and important people in the world. You don't have to do it forever, but if you're in doubt about what to do, be an amazing teacher. Just for your 20s, be a teacher. Be a primary school teacher, yeah. especially if you're a bloke. We need male primary school teachers. Even if you're not a teacher, be a teacher. Mm. Share your ideas. Don't take for granted your education. Rejoice in what you learn and spray it. Seven, define yourself by what you love. Ooh. I found myself doing this thing a bit recently where if someone asked me, what sort of music I like, I say, well, I don't listen to the radio because pop song lyrics annoy me. Or if someone asks me what food I like, I say, I think truffle oil is overused and slightly obnoxious. <laughs> and I see it all the time online, people whose idea of being part of a subculture is to hate Coldplay or football or feminists or the Liberal Party. We have a tendency to define ourselves in opposition to stuff. As a comedian, I make my living out of it. But try to also express your passion for things you love. Be demonstrative and generous in your praise of those you admire. Send thank you cards and give standing ovations. Be pro stuff, not just anti stuff. Mm. Eight, respect people with less power than you. I have in the past made important decisions about people I work with, agents and producers, big decisions based largely on how they treat the wait staff in the restaurants we're having the meeting in. I don't care if you're the most powerful cat in the room. I will judge you mm. on how you treat the least powerful. Mm. So there. <laughs> Nine, yeah. finally, don't rush. Ooh. You don't need to already know what you're going to do with the rest of your life. I'm not saying sit around smoking cones all day, but also <laughs> Speak don't language. panic. Most people I know who were sure of their career path at 20 are having midlife crises now. Oh, that part. I said at the beginning of this ramble, which is already three and a half minutes long, that life is meaningless. It was not a flippant assertion. I think it's absurd, the idea of seeking meaning in the set of circumstances that happens to exist after 13.8 billion years worth of unguided events. Leave it to humans to think the universe has a purpose for them. Mm. However, I'm no nihilist. I'm not even a cynic. I am actually rather romantic. And here's my idea of romance. You will soon be dead. <laughs> Life will sometimes seem long and tough and, God, it's tiring. And you will sometimes be happy and sometimes sad and then you'll be old and then you'll be dead. There is only one sensible thing to do with this empty existence and that is fill it. Not fill it, fill it. And in my opinion, until I change it, Life is best filled by learning as much as you can about as much as you can, taking pride in whatever you're doing, having compassion, sharing ideas, running, being enthusiastic. And then there's love and travel and wine and sex and art and kids and giving and mountain climbing, but you know all that stuff already. It's an incredibly exciting thing, this one meaningless life of yours. Good luck and thank you for indulging me. That was a really good speech. Tim is, he's a very smart individual. You can, tell, you, can, you can really tell that he's very analytical in the way that he thinks and the way that he processes things. Um, clearly, he has a level of intellect that goes beyond what I think his exterior presentation would leave you to believe. Um, college graduate, didn't know that, taught himself how to play the piano. That's amazing, because that's not an easy instrument to 
learn, especially by yourself. And he just puts together these very thought-provoking songs and clearly speeches and just I would love to sit in a room with him I feel like and just talk to him about stuff and see how his brain works and where it goes and the different levels and layers that he puts on anything that he conceptualizes in his head it just it feels like I'm just listening to someone who I know he, nobody really has it figured out, but it feels like he's got it figured out. And I'm sure he would disagree with that if, if he heard such a claim. But I can't, I can't help but feel that way whenever I listen to him. And that was a really, really impressive commencement speech. I'm a college graduate. I work in higher education. I've been to plenty of commencements. I've heard lots of commencement speeches and they usually have about the same factors about the world is your oyster type of metaphors and you can achieve whatever you put your mind to and you need to be a citizen of the world and help others. But the way that he was very frank with a lot of these graduates and some of the things that he was saying was like, if you don't have it figured out, that's okay. You're probably gonna get depressed that's okay. There's ways to go about doing it. The fact that he even mentioned exercise as an important life lesson is humongous. The idea of exercise, I think, gets lost on a lot of people. And I don't think that it's necessarily intentional. I think for some it might be. I definitely think there's people who just don't like to exercise, um, especially if you think about the traditional way of exercising, you know, going to the gym, going running on a treadmill, whatever the case might be. But I don't think that I think that, that exercise is extremely important. It's something that I have <laughs> neglected very recently, but I want to start to get back into. And I think it doesn't have to look very traditional. It can be whatever you want it to be. I personally am very interested in calisthenics. It was just body weight workouts. And it's something that I'm probably gonna be starting up doing. Actually, I've already started it, but actually dedicating myself and, and working to build up my ability to perform some of these exercises but that's neither here nor there i'm getting into the weeds you can do whatever you want to exercise just go for a walk around the neighborhood do yoga do pilates you can do acro yoga that looks really cool but there's just so many different ways to just be active and take care of your body and this is your vessel this is the only vessel that you're gonna have in this life and it should be taken care of just like your car needs routine maintenance your body needs routine maintenance as well. So that's something that I highly resonate with. And I appreciate that he brought that up in a commencement setting. I think this is a commencement setting. It looks like a commencement setting. Everybody's in gowns and regalia. So that's what I have to assume. Like I said, I've been to a few of these. But I'm rambling and I apologize for that because this is what happens when I watch Tim and Jen. I just tend to ramble. This was fun. This was a lot of fun. This was something different from Tim. Wasn't music, but that's okay because I'm not opposed to just watching whatever it is that you think you would like to see me watch. Uh, so thank you very much, Blitz, for sending me this. I think this is something that I'm probably going to save in my repertoire and just watch whenever I feel like I need a little bit of motivation or just a little bit of reminder of, you know, some of the most important things in life. I hope that you took something away from this. I really hope that this can start some discourse and some discussion about some of the things that he says, because I do think that he said a lot of really important things that I just didn't touch on in this 20 minutes or so that I've been recording now. And I would like to continue that conversation with you if you feel so inclined. So let me know down below what you thought in the comments. What were one or two of the biggest points that he brought up that resonated very much with you and why? And are there things that you're doing to take action on those points or change your habit things of that nature i would love to just chat you know with with you all about what we just watched today and what we heard and some of the lessons that we had so i look forward to talking to you i really appreciate you if you have watched to this point you're amazing and you're awesome i hope that you like the video if you enjoyed. I hope that you subscribe to the channel if you feel so inclined. Um, and yeah, I, I really hope to see you participate in this little community that I'm trying to build and I would love to just chat with you more. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for being here. Hope you have a great day or a great night, depending on the time that you're watching this. And I will see you in the next one. Peace. Yo, 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 yo.